Hey, hey, come on over. Have some fun with Crazy Taxi. Oh, my God. <laughs> I owned two Dreamcasts. I owned a Japanese Dreamcast and a US Dreamcast. So I would sneak into my brother's friend's room <laughs> and just try to get away with an hour. I never did own a Dreamcast. Um, I liked the idea of it, but uh, a friend of mine had one, so I just played on his. Um, I, I had ordered one and I paid way over <laughs> the, the actual retail price to get one imported to the US. I don't regret doing that at all. I was the biggest Sega fan. And, and to have, they had two games on that system when I ordered it, when I bought it. They had Virtua Fighter 3, TB, and Pin Pin Trislon. And Pin Pin Trislon is still a horrible game. You know, it was being presented as the bold feature and uh, me as a Genesis owner, uh, thinking of Sonic in a 3D space. Um, just that idea and seeing that in action was absolutely mind-blowing, you know, in, in retrospect it kind of looks like trash. But at the time it looked like the best thing I had ever seen. Uh, favorite game would be Fighting Vipers 2. That was the one that I would go over to my friend's place and we'd play all the time. It's hard to argue against Soul Calibur. That's kind of the best game on the system. That was the most polished game. It was the most feature-rich game. Uh, it was the most graphically impressive game. Still, I feel like throughout the Dreamcast's entire lifespan, no game ever looked better than that. Crazy Taxi was our generation's Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Dreamcast was, I think, the first system that had built-in online capabilities. Like, it came with a 56K modem. I had no idea the Dreamcast could connect to the internet. I think we were of the age where our parents would put severe restrictions on things like that. Lag was terrible, connections were terrible, nothing was stable. It was amazing that we put up with it. And I remember playing with some friends from Chicago. I was out in San Francisco, and I'm originally from Chicago. My friends in Chicago were playing, and I, I could get to play with them. So that was awesome. That was, that was a great experience. We want you to enter the world of Ultimate Network Gaming. We want to give you the experience of traveling to distant planets and communicating in real time. Yeah, that was another thing about Dreamcast. They had these little, like, Tamagotchi little things you could plug into the controller. Well, the thing about this little screen, this is a memory card too, right? I can't exactly remember. It's the dumb memory device. I'm trying to figure out, like, if it was a second screen for the game, like, are you gonna have to, like, mount it on your glasses and be able to look at it while you're playing the game at the same time? 2K1, it was, uh, it was a, your play screen. I think in Sonic Adventure that you could download some of the, um, the pets and then you could kind of feed your pets on this little system and take it with you and stuff. I don't know if I can get it. I mean, it's, it actually feels all right. I can barely fit this in my hands now. How did tiny 10-year-old Caitlin fit this in her hands? Oh, geez, it has been a while. Boom. <laughs> oh, I want to watch this intro. Get out of my way, you. Oh, sh Sure, I accidentally crashed into her area. Let's do this. The handling of the car is really kind of funny. There's no, like, sort of centrifugal force involved. It's just on rails almost as you turn. Yo. Oh, it's in San Francisco. I forgot it was in San Francisco. Disc cannot be read. Please check the disc for scratches, but it's still playing. That doesn't make sense. Maxi, he was a cheap character. He was kind of the Eddie Gordo, if you know Tekken. He was kind of Eddie Gordo of, of the game. Like, people just mash on buttons and they end up beating you even though they sucked. Oh, it's Nintendo controls. Great. So the A isn't the actual A. The A is down here instead of being over there. Fantastic. You win. The audio is kind of trash, though. So. You can definitely tell there's been a lot of progress on that point. Okay, here we go. I remember this music. It's so cool. Ah, the music. It's so awesome. Soul Caliber. Ironically, 
really because it, it, it led to the demise of Sega as a hardware developer. But this was kind of Sega, in my opinion, at their best. Parts of it were unwieldy, parts of it were weird. The memory cart would, you know, you could take your chow with you. Uh, parts of it were really dumb. Um, but it was unique and it felt like it was made with love as opposed to uh, being made out of a focus group because they have to capture the 18 to 34 Mountain Dew audience. I think, you know, it was sort of the small, it was the small player and I think everyone had a sense of that. You know, people really, I know that the people who had it really, really loved it. I don't know, man, it's still one of my favorite systems of all time. I, I, I really wish it could have been more successful. But his copy was this bootlegged copy that he had gotten somehow from Japan. And it was on a disc, you know, and then, you know, it had writing on the disc and whatever. I'll just story you in there. <laughs> the Nightmare of Shenmue, which I never actually played. I've only heard Nightmares. If I want to run errands, I'll play Red Dead.